video is making the rounds online, showing what's believed to be the fight that happened Wednesday afternoon. Metro officers responding to reports of a student fight across the street from Rancho High School. The investigation revealing the victim got into a physical altercation with 15 people before cops arrived. Nothing that large, like, like three people maybe, but like 15, I've never heard of that before. Rancho High Junior Antonio Green says he's a classmate and saw the video. It could happen to anybody. It could happen for me just for like, because I have a natural mean face. It could happen to me just from looking at somebody the wrong way. Neighbor Greg Bostick was shocked to see it. From the video, that, that, that's a problem. You can't just retaliate with hate, you know, and get back and revenge all the time. You, sometimes you got to talk it out. Off camera, a neighbor tells us that he helped carry the victim to the campus parking lot. Bostick says he saw the aftermath. Somebody was laying on the ground and they were like out of commission and incapacitated. Metro says the victim appeared to be unconscious when school staff performed CPR. Right in that parking lot, I saw somebody uh, getting chest compressions and CPR. The police came, ambulance, you, fire truck. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'm Jason yeah, Johansson, yeah. the homicide lieutenant with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. My goal here today is to provide you a brief overview of the initial investigation when we responded uh, up into the point of the arrest of the eight su subjects today during our operation. Let me start off with our response. Uh, on November 1st of 2023, the Clark County School District Police Department, they responded to a report of a battery as a result of a fight. Uh, initially, it came out at Rancho High School. Very quickly, uh, in the initial preliminary investigation, it was determined that the actual fight occurred in the alley way at 1308 21st Street, which as you can see on the map to my left, is directly east of Rancho High School in close proximity. And it was learned that this fight occurred uh, right after school had let out at Rancho High School. And it is believed that all members uh, that were involved in this incident, whether it be as witnesses, uh, suspects, and victims, were uh, attendees of Rancho High School. We also learned that how the victim ended up back at Rancho was that after the fight occurred, he was laying unconscious and, unresp and unresponsive in the back alley and a citizen nearby saw him, uh, began attending to him, and carried him back to Rancho High School, which is what prompted the initial 911 phone calls related to this incident. Following uh, medical's response, he was transported to UMC, where very early on in the investigation, it was determined that uh, Mr. Lewis had sustained uh, non-survival head trauma, and uh, our initiate, that was when the homicide section responded, and we took over this investigation due to the extent of his injuries. As you know, the, vi the, vi the video that has been shared widely on social media, which I am not going to uh, show today, uh, but many people have seen it, is very graphic and, in my opinion, is very void of humanity. What you see in the video, though, is approximately 10 subjects kicking, stomping, and punching our victim, Jonathan, as he's on the ground, not defending himself and to the point where he becomes unconscious. During our investigation, we quickly learned that the fight was actually over a pair of stolen wireless headphones and possibly over a stolen marijuana vape pen uh, from incidents that occurred earlier in the week. And that as a result of those stolen items which were taken from the victim or the victim's friends, they had agreed to fight with several of the subjects in the back alley uh, where the fight occurred. After school let out, all parties then walked to that back alley where, as you see in the video, our victim uh, removes his clothing, is get, engages in a uh, fight initially with one subject, and the minute the punch is thrown with that person, uh, 10 subjects immediately swarm him, put him into the ground, and begin kicking, punching, and stomping on him. Over the course of this investigation and in close coordination with Clark County School District, School District Police Department and Rancho High School administrators, we were able to quickly identify many of the subjects uh, involved in the fight from the video that was taken and shared off of social media. As a result, we have identified approximately 10 subjects that were involved in the murder. Eight of those subjects we have been able to positively identify. On November 7th, our team was advised by family members that our victim had sustained, uh, was currently medically brain dead, at which point in time uh, they had made a decision to donate his organs. And yesterday, 
the victim was uh, an autopsy was performed by the Clark County Coroner's Office on the victim where he was his cause of death was blunt force trauma homicide. As I mentioned earlier, as a result of our investigation, we were able to identify eight of those 10 subjects. And based on that investigation, we, we conducted an apprehension operation this morning with the FBI criminal apprehension team and members of our major violators and narcotics bureau. During that operation, we were able to arrest all eight subjects and we executed nine search warrants at various residences throughout the Las Vegas Valley. During those search warrants, detectives were able to obtain numerous clothing from the residences that the suspects wore during the attack on Mr. Lewis. All subjects that were arrested in this incident range from the age of 13 to 70, 17. All are juveniles and all were booked into the Clark County Juvenile Hall on charges of murder. The case will now be turned over to the Clark County District Attorney's Office, who we've been in close coordination with, and we'll go through the normal steps of determining, uh, for, uh, going through the normal steps for them to be certified as an adult. As the undersheriff mentioned in this investigation, it is far from over. Uh, we've identified eight of the ten we are believe are responsible for the murder. But through our PIO office, we will be pushing out additional pictures of two individuals that we have yet to identify that participated in the incident and uh, with the uh, requesting assistance from the community with identifying them. Uh, I also want to secondly ask anybody in the community that if you have know anybody who witnessed this, if you see video of this from social media, Please don't, be, don't just believe we have it. There's a high likelihood that there's additional video out there that we don't have. I encourage anyone, if you have that video, to please contact the LVMPD homicide section or if you wish to remain anonymous, that video can be shared through Clark County, uh, through um, Crime Stoppers in Nevada. Uh, that information is very necessary in investigations like this and has helped us greatly in this investigation. In closing, I just want to thank my team for the uh, for all the investigative efforts that they that they uh, did on this case. Our homicide section does amazing work, and they were able to get it done very rapidly. Uh, additionally, in closing, I just want to uh, second the uh, under sheriff's uh, remarks. If you're if you're a mentor uh, with youth, if you're a parent, you you can't you have to assume that your kids have seen this video. It has been shared widely on social media. Don't put your head in the sand. Please uh, talk to your kids about it and explain. People need to know right from wrong and that this was uh, that this act was heinous. And as I mentioned earlier, um, hopefully uh, kids can learn from us so we don't have another incident such as this. Uh, with that, I'll take any additional questions you may have. Uh, I have a question. Can you can you please explain to our audience? You know, this happened on November first, and mm -hmm. it took until November fourteenth to arrest remain. And some people assume that the arrest going to happen right away. It was all caught on video. Why weren't they just arrested? Can you explain that to the audience? Yeah, and gladly, and I'm, great question, I'm glad you asked it. So when we're talking about an investigation like this, I, I mentioned before, one of the biggest aspects of us doing the investigation is this is a highly emotional video. Anybody that watches it has parents, it is emotional for all involved. But remember, for us to go put, arrest somebody for the charge of murder, we have to be right. We have to make sure that we have positively identified who those people are. It's one thing for someone to say, I believe that is such and such, we have to actually physically be able to put that person there. If you watch that video, many of them have hoods over their faces. Many of them have their faces obscured during the attack. Our job is to go in there and be able to be able to prove in court beyond a reasonable doubt that each one of these people are the people depicted in the video, not someone that looks like them, that it is actually them, which is actually uh, the second part of our investigation, uh, not second, the closing part of our investigation today with the search warrants, getting the clothing, that people were wearing during the attack. We've also recovered numerous cell phones. All these items go into that investigation. And that is all the things that the investigators of crimes like this, or any crime for that matter, have to do uh, to be able to get a court case in court and prove beyond a reasonable doubt. You said that uh, this was a highly emotional video. This video is taken on national and national. Timeless. Is, that, is this the case? If not, what factors lead to that determination? To me, it's you have to follow the evidence and the only thing I'll say to that is there is no evidence at this time that this is a hate crime and one thing I can assure you is if this was a hate crime there would be someone getting arrested for charges related to it being hate crime right now I have no evidence at all that this is a hate crime it is a murder which in my opinion is a very heinous crime in and of itself but I do not have evidence of a hate crime can you uh, 
uh, go over again what exactly led to this fight. So it was stealing wireless headphones as mm -hmm. well as a marijuana vape pen. Did, were, were these items stolen from Lewis's friend as his dad is telling everyone at this point? What we were initially told and what we believe still to this point is that uh, the initial fight was going to be between his friend, which if you watch the video, he's wearing like tan pants. Uh, that at some point in time, uh, Lewis went into the back alley with him and that then the fight occurred between Lewis and the subjects that were believed to have stolen the wireless uh, uh, air headphones. During the course of the investigation, we started learning additional details that there might be also a connection to some stolen like marijuana vape pen or some type of marijuana uh, in, in, device used to inhale marijuana. And then out of curiosity, going into that neighborhood, neighbors have mentioned that that alleyway is very prone to student fights happening. Is Metro or CCSD PD taking any action to try and mitigate that area with students congregating and potentially fighting? Uh, I can let Clark County School District PD uh, go over what their response is to that back alley. What I can tell you is that uh, in speaking with our downtown area command commander, they have had an increased presence down there in that alley. Um, but I'm, I'm personally not aware of prior police responses to that back alley, but the Clark County School District PD, uh, if you have one to answer the rest of that. Hello, Mike Black, I Chief of the Clark County School District Police Department. That area um, is, yes, there has been fights there, but there's also been fights all around that, that school, um, in parks, in other neighborhoods, things like that. But that's typical of most of our schools, especially our 30 high schools, where um, certain students don't um, choose to fight on campus because of the uh, repercussions. So they'll choose to take that, their issues off campus. And this is, this is a typical example of that. That particular area and all areas are patrolled um, by our patrol force. And uh, that high school and all of our 30 high schools have two uh, campus officers that, that patrol that, uh, those schools or their assigned school each day. And there were two uh, school police officers on duty that day. Where were they when that fight was happening? Uh, they were on. They were patrolling the campus. Why did they see that fight? Uh, where were they patrolling the campus? I mean, how far away from campus can they patrol, or do they patrol? They patrol where um, where incidents lead them, typically. So if they have information that there's going to be a fight, they'll be there. Um, in this particular incident, there was no inf information that there was going to be an incident that, that was going to occur in the apartments next to the school. Uh, this is Joshua with Channel 8. I just have a question. Do any of these juveniles have previous records? I couldn't say that. I, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of the uh, information uh, re related to the uh, suspects. And also, can you just, last, last week, there was also an incident in Hardy Middle School where a, a body was found. Can you just talk, provide any sort of reassurance for parents who have kids that go to CCSD about safety? Um, Metro also investigated that incident, um, so they can speak to that incident. But as far as our police force and of how um, the school district uh, provides safety in schools, um, we do have 194 police officers uh, that cover our 370 schools each and every school day. And obviously that's, that's not enough, however, uh, 40, 40 of them are on patrol each and every day. Um, and that's when school starts. Incidents that occur overnight, uh, we do not have that force working um, during, for incidents that occur, particularly for a Harney incident like that. What is CCSD police doing differently at the incident in Rancho? Obviously, an incident like this is gonna impact the school community, uh, specifically Rancho, the students, obviously the staff, um, and parents, and just not parents of, of Rancho, but uh, parents all over Clark County. I've received calls um, basically stating that it could have been their child. Um, what we've done, obviously, we're partnering with our agencies like we always do, Metro, uh, North Las Vegas, which is very close um, border-wise to Rancho. Um, and uh, we're providing extra coverage at Rancho and other sites. Uh, we're also uh, providing a, additional service uh, to that school, um, and I can't speak of that right now. When you say extra coverage, does that mean more than one officer? Typically, incidents at school happen in the mornings, at lunchtime, and after school. So those uh, coverages uh, increase for those hours of the school day. And 
how is CCSD PD responding to the threats teachers, administration at Rancho High School have been receiving since this video went viral? Again, I can't speak of that, but there are additional resources um, provided to that site to address those, uh, those issues that are occurring. Were the suspects apprehended at Rancho High School? I can't speak of where the... Uh, there are suspects apprehended at numerous locations across the valley, so I don't have every last individual location where they are apprehended, but uh, I'm not aware of one apprehended on school grounds right now. No. You are not? No, I'm not aware. Okay. Thank you, everybody. This is the second Thank you. video. Thank you. What does it say about just children in Las Vegas? Uh, I don't want to get into surmising what I believe is going on with the youth guy. I don't, I don't want to believe that this is what everyone is doing. I want to believe that this is a small subset of the population. Thank you.